Son Khoi arrives at the prosthetic workshop in the Cambodian town of Battambang. He's to be fitted with a transfemoral prosthesis made of polypropylene. The simple, low-cost technology used here was introduced in a number of developing countries and countries at war by the International Committee of the Red Cross, the ICRC, in 1988. On arrival, the patient is first examined by a qualified prosthetist. Before taking a cast, an elastic bandage is put on to tighten the stump and reduce its volume. Once the volume has been reduced, the measurements to make the socket can be taken and recorded in the patient's personal record card. A negative plaster mould is taken by hand, following international professional standards. The negative is shaped and corrected, or rectified, to ensure stability and that the stump will be comfortable. The negative is converted into a positive so the socket can be made. The positive is put into the alignment jig in its initial flexion, abduction or reduction position. A cup is filled with plaster and fixed under the positive. This is used as a reinforcement for the connection of the alignment system. A stocking is laid over the positive to avoid any thermal reaction with the hot plastic sheet. The end of the stocking is cut off and removed so that the sheet will have full contact with the cup. The homopolymer polypropylene sheet is cleaned and oven heated at 170 degrees Celsius. After 20 minutes, the sheet is wrapped around the plaster mold. Wow. Vacuum suction is then used to get a perfect shape. Any excess plastic sheet is removed. The waste can be recycled into various kinds of walking aids, such as elbow crutches, auxiliary crutches, and so on. The edge of the completed socket is finally smoothed off. The basic components of the prosthesis are now assembled. The length of the prosthesis is cut according to the measurements registered in the personal file of each patient.
The alignment system is composed of a convex disc and a concave conical cup. This alignment system was developed by the ICRC and is widely used in prosthetic workshops like Battambang. The conical cup is butt welded to the knee. Different combinations of components can be used depending on the length of the stump and the type of socket. For instance, here two cups are welded together in order to compensate for a short stump. And here, in the case of a distal end-bearing socket, the conical cup is reversed and welded to it. The assembly of Som Khoi's prosthesis now continues. The ICRC alignment system allows antero-postero and mediolateral translations up to 10 millimeters and flexion, extension, abduction and adduction up to 10 degrees and rotation. After all the components are assembled, the alignment is checked on the workbench before the patient tries the prosthesis for the first time. The prosthetist checks the alignment again when the patient is standing still and then as he walks. As the patient gets used to using his prosthesis, further adjustments are made in the workshop to ensure that the alignment and fit are correct. After every adjustment, the prosthesis is tried by the patient and carefully observed by the prosthetist. Once the prosthesis is ready, a physiotherapist will help Som Khoi to go through a series of gait training exercises to gain confidence and stability. Patients like Som Khoi have to learn to walk, to sit and stand up, and to control the knee. This training can take up to 10 to 15 days. The cosmetic shaping of the prosthesis will be done only when the patient feels comfortable and mobile. <laughs> The aligned component parts can now be welded together so that they will remain strong and durable. The knee joint is disassembled so that the cosmetic parts can be finished and added. Plaster is used to shape the thigh as well as the calf.
The shell is made with a polypropylene sheet by drape forming. The plaster cast is now removed. The shell is welded to the socket. Holes are drilled in the cosmetic shell so that the knee can be reassembled. All the mechanical parts of the knee joint are cleaned and greased to ensure its durability. The ICRC knee joint can be locked and unlocked by the patient depending on the kind of ground he's walking on. The upper part of the calf is now cut to its final shape. The ICRC has developed an extrusion welding gun which melts the polypropylene at the right temperature without burning it. The seam becomes as strong as the rest of the shell. A ring of EVA foam is added to keep the calf in place. EVA foam may also be used on the shell to protect clothing from abrasion. The patient's file number is stamped on the prosthesis. The socket fit, prosthesis length and gait are given a final careful check before the patient leaves. They're reminded to come back to the center any time if and when repairs are needed. The lifespan of a prosthesis for adults is two to three years, depending on use and body weight changes. Children need to be checked at least every nine months, either to adjust the length or change the prosthesis to allow for growth. After two weeks, Son Koi leaves the workshop. He's now walking almost normally. It's the start of a new life. For many years to come, the Battambang workshop, alongside dozens of ICRC workshops around the world, will go on helping thousands of patients, like Son Khoi, who've been disabled by accident or illness, providing them with many different kinds of polypropylene prostheses and orthoses.